Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Going for my walk. Wearing my waterproof boots. Hiking boots. Because we have had an April Fool's joke played on us by Mother Nature. We had a spring snowstorm and we got a little over 14 inches of snow. Very unusual for April in Maine. <coughs> but I think Mother Nature's done messing with us as far as blizzards go but it was a pretty good storm and we are getting some raindrops so the lens will get a few drops on it once in a while i'll wipe it every now and then I don't mind walking in the rain, as uh, my mother used to say, you're not made of sugar, you're not going to melt, which is true. So with that, we're going to walk. See where we end up. All right, so we're gonna get a little wet. That's okay. It's not freezing cold anymore. It's not. Uh, it's not exactly warm. But. Everything's melting, it's running down the street. I think I finally got the camera straightened out. Oh, got the nose going already because it's cool. Sorry about that. So anyway, yes, we had over 14 inches of snow. And I'm going on a walk. Get out of the road here. Today I got my Apple Watch going, as well as my cell phone app. They usually conflict with each other. It messes up my mileage on the Android app, but I will still have a record of the walk. And the reason why I'm using the Apple Watch is because I can track my heart rate through my walk so I can see recovery time and things like that 
But anyway, as you can see, we got a lot of snow. And uh, today normally was going to be range day to go shooting, but it's been spitting raindrops and a little breezy this morning, a little chilly too. So we're gonna hold off on that till tomorrow. I haven't walked since Wednesday, I think. And today is Saturday. So I had two days off from walking. So lately on YouTube, I've been digging out vintage 70s horror movies and 80s. Found a couple that I hadn't seen. I watched those last night. One was called The Unseen. Very unusual movie. It starred uh, that guy that was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest who played Cheswick. <laughs> I want my cigarettes. He played this nutty innkeeper. Really wild story. And the story was that he was an innkeeper, well his dad was, and you'd have to watch the whole movie for it to unfold, but basically the short gist of it is, his father caught him molesting his sister, and uh, got his sister pregnant, and uh, his father was going to punish him by removing his winky against his will. So. He ended up killing his father and stabbing him with the scissors that his dad was going to use on him. So, because <laughs> he wanted to make sure, because he knew that his kid was a pervert, and he wanted to make sure he wouldn't do that again. So anyway, he ended up killing him, his dad, takes over the inn, living with his sister who he passes off as his wife. And of course they have a mentally retarded or mentally damaged, genetically altered, incestuous child who grows up into this big, giant, strong goon, I guess, who was living in the basement and would travel around in the house inside the vents. Really bizarre. So it's like an 80s horror slasher film without all the gore and stuff. It was more suspenseful and filmed well. It was actually very good. It also starred Barbara Bach. So, that was from 1981, called The Unseen. Then, uh, the other one, I forget the title because the original title was changed for the United States release. So I'm not really clear what the title is, but it was on YouTube and starred Bo Svensson who you may remember as Buford Puff Pusser in Walking Tall. And uh, that was also good. And that film was from 1980. And the young man that starred in it was the brother of Christy Nichols, Christy McNichols. 
So he was another teenage sex symbol, pinup cute boy from 1980, along with his sister Christy McNichol, who was pretty foxy. So that movie basically was a mother who was an aunt, I'll explain that in a minute, who when the male that stars in the movie was a little kid, baby, the mother killed the father and the baby's mother. At least that's what she told her, her kid she was taking care of. Uh, by fixing their brakes on their car and their car went down a steep curvy road, went off the road and they both died. So she kept the kid. So, turns out later in the film that there was a local guy who figured out what had happened and she made quick work of him. She killed him, stabbed him to death. And her son, who is presumably her son, walked in on them while she was killing them. So she turned around and said that this guy tried to rape her. She was defending herself. So Bo Svensson plays the detective who shows up and automatically starts thinking that the young kid did it and his mother's lying to cover for him, which isn't what happened. And because of all of these shenanigans, other things in the movie are unfoiled which includes her son is like this basketball star in high school and scouts are interested in him but now he's got this dead person in his mother's kitchen hanging over his head putting a cloud on that and it turns out the coach of the team is gay and the guy that his mother killed in her kitchen was gay she didn't know that so she was trying to say that guy was trying to rape her which he wasn't because he was gay so then Bo Svensson tries to pass it off on the young kid was a teenage boy and the gay coach was molesting him but she wasn't. So it was a really strange movie. But it turns out that they pretty much set up Bo Svensson in this movie, his character, um, that he's bigoted, hates gays, actually threatens one with a gun in the movie. So. He just saw that scenario and nothing else. They were already guilty before being innocent. So that's how that went. I won't tell you how it ends, but it's interesting. Uh, basically, the woman that said it was the kid's mother wasn't his mother. They wipe off my lens, I hope you can see. So it was a pretty wild movie. Had never seen it before. And that's what I like about these obscure movies you find on YouTube, because some of them are very good. They just never got distribution rights, or in this case, HBO owned the rights to this one. And uh, it was released on VHS. And I don't think it ever got a DVD release. Which is too bad, because I've seen movies on DVD much worse than this one. This one wasn't even that bad. I just don't remember the title of it. 
because the the main title of the movie is like freaking eight words with commas and it was ridiculously too long but that being said I fell asleep watching one last night that I'll probably finish up shortly from 1981 called The Hearse I had not seen that one either basically it is a haunted house movie which involves this woman having a dream about this black hearse and her aunt who used to own the house turns out the town is crooked the sheriff is crooked they want to get that property they know about the rumors on it everybody knows about everything except her of course because she doesn't live there she just i'll probably be here for the summer i didn't see how that one ended but that was interesting also nobody i really know starred in that one but it looked pretty good so anyway I'm a big fan of 60s, 70s, and 80s horror and sci-fi films, and other movies as well. Kind of a unique time for, it was a unique time for uh, filmmaking in the 70s especially, because a lot of directors had carte blanche to do what they wanted and studios trusted them more with their money so usually they only got directors that were known or good at making things and you got a lot of really good movies everything from the exorcist to the changeling to poltergeist in the 80s and then hollywood changed and now hollywood's terrible they cannot make a good movie to save their life they got a movie out right now called The First Omen, which is basically a remake of the First Omen movie. I mean, who wants to see that? The first one was made too well. All you're gonna get now is CGI. Big deal. So, Hollywood now pretty much is owned by China. And that's that until that changes then you get all these liberal lunatics in Hollywood who are making woke films with woke messages and the public doesn't want it just like they don't want electric vehicles they're gonna try to force it on people and that isn't gonna work in America it just isn't you're not gonna be able to force dealerships to sell a certain amount of electric cars that's going to lose in court. Can't force a business and tell them what to sell or not sell. Either have Congress ban gasoline engines or go home. That's it. That's how a republic with a democratic process works. Those rules are only as good until the next president. So. Anyway, nice to be walking today. Can't wait till I have my sidewalks back so I don't get killed. But I'm not dead yet. So we're going to go shooting tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a nice day. Uh, as far as it being cloudy and around 40. In the afternoon anyway. Might be a little cooler in the morning. 
but we will we will have 3030s Uh, 223 with the Mini 14s. We'll have the Mini 14s going. Also got a new pistol to review. Today, actually. And this is that same... The same tree that always has an issue whenever we get bad storms seems like every time we get a bad storm and I walk by here you get piles of trees that broke off you can see that one broke from right there don't know if they hit the power lines or not <clears throat> you still have people today with no power by the way They're cutting into that though. They had 350,000 last night, it was 220,000. So, I think we'll get there. We didn't lose power this time. Actually, we did twice, but for literally about five or 10 seconds each time, it came back on. I was surprised. So, This was over 14 inches of extremely wet, heavy snow. Which a lot of trees snapped under. <clears throat> All across the state. I'll wipe this off here. We got a tree down up here. big branch anyways looks like the snow plow plowed this year and a lot of the snow melted already so a lot of the snow we got just a day and a half ago is gone so we see this downed tree here which I'm sure somebody is going to drive into that at some point because people can't help themselves so we got a couple of pine pine bows over here bent over from the weight they haven't sprung back up yet as we can see Another one here. That's all just weight of the snow. Get this broken one here. Another broken branch here. Hopefully that's the last trick Mother Nature plays on us this year. I hope. When this is all gone, I'll be able to walk with my nice walking shoes. I got two different pair, one of them for at night. They got good reflective inserts in them those are the ones i know work well because i have seen that now this tree right here is obvious look at it that tree is leaning over so i wonder if they're going to get rid of that i would but the direction is going might land on this house right here if that fell. I don't recall that tree being bent like that. 
We got a lean now. So let me tell you a story about a tree falling down. I was upstairs sleeping, taking a nap, and uh, we had this big thunderstorm go through. Horrendous rain, awful wind, and I hear banging on the door downstairs. So I go downstairs, there's a neighbor banging on the door saying a tree fell on your garage there's a tree on your garage okay well thanks a lot thanks for letting me to know you know so i look and yep there's a tree on the garage smushed it my car was inside of the garage so of course now i'm worried about my car and uh my brother's truck was parked off to the side so while the tree came near his truck, it really didn't come close to hitting it. Meanwhile, I got my car inside the garage. So we figured out a way to prop the garage up with these braces that uh, my brother made. Got some stuff at Home Cheapo, cut it up, made these braces. It did the trick because that garage was slowly, slowly creaking and falling over. And I didn't want my car to get squooshed. So we ended up cutting a piece of the garage corner off with a sawzall. And uh, made the opening big enough. And I backed my car out. It just barely fit. I scraped up a little bit of my runner on one side, but it, it buffed out. It wasn't a big deal. So I saved the buggy. and what happened was is the tree was on a neighbor's property which is the whole point of why i'm mentioning it along with that tree we just passed because that tree isn't on that person's property but leaning towards their house so what you do is legally you send and this was on the advice from the insurance company uh that that tree that broke there was still some of it standing on the property that it came from that's already been weakened and could fall. So they said to legally uh, protect yourself to send them a letter explaining that they need to remove that tree. A legal letter, not just some friggin' note saying, hey, you jerk, move your tree, you son of a beep. No, legal paperwork which my older brother who works in a law firm uh, drew up for us and we mailed it to them certified so they had to sign for it and it also expressed that there was no animosity in the letter that this was for insurance business purposes for legal matters that they need to remove their tree Or it's up to them if they do or not. And if they don't, they're liable for damages if it falls on our property. So in other words, it was up to them to remove it or not. But they should. Because legally, that letter bound them and making them liable. So they ended up paying to have the tree cut down completely. So it's no longer an issue. But if I live next door to that house with that tree leaning the way it is, I would have one of those letters drafted up after talking with the insurance company. And uh, you can call your insurance company before something happens too. Say, you know what? I don't like how this looks. We get a, you know, probably won't happen, but if it does, what should I do? One of those kind of things. So I took video, I took pictures. That's usually, all that's sufficient and uh so unfortunately it ain't like the old days where you just 
do a spit handshake agreement deal with your neighbor and both people would always honor it and be honorable those days are gone so anyways and then over here looks like they cut up that tree and they're going to use it for firewood is what it looks like that's what that looks like to me so they must have had a branch break off of this one too because that wasn't here so this storm was another one that caused the mess it caused a big mess for people <clears throat> So when I get around the corner and up the road, I'll see if they cleaned College Street, which I don't think they did. They didn't the last time. And uh, we will see what happens. I just heard my phone make a noise, so. Or it was my Apple Watch. All right. I'm gonna tie my, gonna tie my boot. I've had a malfunction. I thought I turned something off on my phone by accident. But I didn't. I ended up opening a can of worms. So we'll retie this. The other side. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen forcing you to stare at the ground. Alright. I think we're good now. Good to go. It is raining. I am getting wet. But I will make it. We survived the blizzard of 24, which I'm sure you all saw in the national news. Now you're getting a first hand on the ground report of the damages and yes it is still raining you know what I have found while I'm walking more often than you would think is I find a lot of these sockets automotive sockets this one here was probably left on a wheel and decided to pop off so I have found about six of those on the side of the road while I'm walking and they're all the same size as the lugs for a wheel and I find that to be pretty comical somebody up ahead with an umbrella I might actually put my hood up even though I don't like to do that I don't have anything that requires peripheral vision and excuse my hands being in the way my apologies so this uh, video is either going to come out good or it won't
Nope. I just don't like the hood on when I'm walking. I just don't like it. It says here I've walked two point two miles. My beats per minute is up to about 110, which is normal under exertion. <sighs> yeah, doesn't look like I'm getting any sidewalks today, so I'm gonna have to go on Bro Street. My uh, Bro Street route. If I can get through this part right here without getting splashed. Sometimes you always get a wise guy trying to be funny. snow has really gone down a significant amount. It may look like a lot to you on the camera, but we had over 14 inches. These snow banks have dropped about a foot and a half already. It's melting fast. Now Monday, day after tomorrow, it's going to be upwards towards 60 degrees with bright sunshine for the solar eclipse. Which, uh, according to the map I saw, should be between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. More like 3.45 here. So, we'll see what happens with that. This person here doesn't see me yet. There they go. A little bit of tree damage here and there. We've got a snap tree across the street. That branch broke right off. You would think after the three storms we've had this year that broke trees and put people's power out with high winds and things like that, that there wouldn't be many trees left to break. Right now we got a couple of snowflakes mixed in with the rain. So I have been asked before, do you ever walk in the rain? Uh, yes I do. I, I try to avoid it if possible, but I don't like going more than a couple days without exercise. It takes too long to build up the stamina at my age. You have to keep at it. You don't have to every day. But after about three or four days, I would say, um, you feel fresh when you're walking the next time, but you feel a little change in stamina. So, when you're young, it doesn't matter. You can go play six, eight hours of ice hockey two, three days in a row. You might feel a little fatigued on one of those days, but... problem I had was after all that snow shoveling, which I did have to do some shoveling, not much, but I did 
I did trouble what the city plowed out front and clean the rest of it with the snow blower. Now the snow blower has a 28 inch opening, okay? It's over two feet high. And we had snow drifts in the yard that were taller than that by three or four inches. So it was a very difficult snowstorm to clean. It was all super wet and super heavy snow, the worst kind of snow to clean. And uh, the best kind is when it's about 15 to 20 degrees out and it's all dry powder. You know, the kind of snow that really you could clean with a leaf blower if you only had four or five inches. This stuff, no, 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 no. It's very difficult. Now we got a house across the street here. I'm looking at it. That house reminds me of 70s Brady Bunch architecture. I don't know if you remember, but Mr. Brady was an architect. If I remember that correctly. Which means he was good at math. Which I'm not. I'm good at a lot of other stuff, but not math. I'm okay in math. I mean, I got a C in college algebra and calculus. Wasn't a fan of it. I really had to work much harder than other people at it just to get a C. We got a, got a cable down here. Probably internet or communications. I think that's exactly what that is. Oh, this storm caused a little bit of damage. I'm sure I'm gonna have fun in our backyard cleaning up brush in about two, three weeks. I'm gonna burn it all up in a fire. Now we got a trash barrel that doubles as a burning, a burning thingamajigger. And we also have a small fire pit. So I will be having a bunch of stuff going in the next two to three weeks when things dry out and melt. All that wood right now is wet. I got enough experience burning wet wood to not even bother with it. All it does is it makes smoke. People call the fire department. One year they were driving around looking for where the fire was. It's like people just can't help themselves. And a lot of that smoke is white steam because it's wet. So I wait until there's no wind. I'm patient. The day that's not windy, the wood is dry. It goes up pretty quick and easy. No fuss, no muss. Nobody's poking around being nosy. So that's what I do. Now I'm going to show you an example coming up. This is what they changed the main state flag to. This is what board Democrats did in Augusta. Like they had nothing else to do. We've had the main flag like forever in a week since the 60s. 
And they went and changed it to that. And they also sell a version with the gay rainbow on the bottom. The official flag does not have that. But that is an old, an old flag from when we used to belong to Massachusetts. So they went and changed it with the pine tree on it. It's going to be the dumbest looking thing ever. And then they went and stuck the Rainbow Coalition on it. That's not the official flag. The official flag is the part without the rainbow, just the tree. But they changed our state flag. I have one of the older ones, the real one, as I'll call it. And I might put that out just for spite. We'll see. So we still have that branch down from the storm over a week ago, so that's not from this storm. So that one didn't shed anything new. So we'll walk down. Actually, I'm not going to bother. I know they haven't cleaned that yet. Ah, it doesn't look like it. Sometimes I go this way anyway. I'm just going to hang a left at the end of this road and head down to Bro Street. And we'll head back that way. We've got 3.24 miles already. Actually, 2.73, sorry. So, I got to get my five miles in. And the storm is altering my route already. I might take a walk up to the sidewalk up top. See if they cleared that. If they did. And that's the other thing too. I don't know if they've done all of Sabata Street. So I probably shouldn't even bother with it. Because either way, I'm going to run into something they didn't do. Today, anyway. Last time it was a couple days before they cleared the sidewalks. <laughs> My boots untying again. <sighs> glad when I can wear my regular walking shoes. Thing is, is these boots are waterproof. I'm surprised they're untying too because usually what happens is the laces will get wet and they actually grip a little better. I need to get some all cotton laces, that's what I need. Those don't loosen up. I think that would solve this problem. They're great boots. And the boots aren't responsible for the laces used. Oh. Whew. I'm going to get some all cotton boot laces. I don't even know if you can still get those anymore. Mm. 
I just hit three miles. Three miles and 55 minutes. It's not a horrible time. You can hear all the water running in everybody's gutter. This stuff is melting fast. Plus the ground's not frozen, the permafrost is gone. So this was just a nuisance, a nuisance snowstorm. Just to incapacitate and irritate and annoyinate. So we'll walk up this way and we'll see if the sidewalks have been cleared. If not, then we'll come back down this way, head down the other direction and take Bro Street. Personally, I don't think this has been cleaned. Looking good. It's not looking good. Oh, they did. How far up does it go? Nope, they got it. Hey, look at this. Can't really tell till you look. Oh crap. Well, I spoke too soon. They only did a little bit and they didn't do across the street. So Bro Street it is. They stole my sidewalk. There you have it. There it is. Cross over this way. So I can tell you, I am, I usually don't do this, but I run, today I'm running my Android Google Fit app, and I'm using my Apple Watch. Now I already know from past experience, my Apple Watch is very accurate. GPS, 
I don't know how my Apple Watch has GPS with no internet on it. That's not up to me to figure out. But I don't have any phone service for iPhone. And it's not using Wi-Fi. So I have no idea how my Apple Watch knows where I am while using their fitness app. It's some kind of secret I don't know about. So basically that means Apple knows everywhere I am with my watch. The only way they don't is when I have it turned off. And they might even have a way to know that too. But I doubt it. Now I usually don't bring my Apple Watch. I use my Google Fit app. I'd like to see if there's a way to put Google Fit on my Apple Watch and work like the fitness app that comes with the watch works with no internet. But I bring my cell phone with me on my walks anyway, so it's not a big deal. But I like using my Apple Watch better because it keeps track of heart rate and other things. Much better health stats. It keeps calories and stuff like that. I mean, the Google Fit app's okay. It's free. But the Apple Fitness one is much better. So... Anyway... I do know that while it's really weird, while I'm walking, the Google Fit app isn't extremely accurate. As we see a big pile of, big piles of brush here from trees. They obviously had a tree come down out back there somewhere. So that is a pretty big pile of brush here and a chopped up tree. I don't remember if there was a tree right in front here, but that was there before it snowed. So they must have been doing their spring cleaning before that storm came. Probably had a tree knocked down behind their house somewhere. Best guess. Tough telling, not knowing. That'd be great if you had a wood stove. That's all like free fuel for the fire. Let's see if we see any other tree carnage around here. We're going to be turning up here, up ahead, onto Bro Street anyways. See what we see up that ways. So anyway, uh, we got another, I was talking about it earlier, I got sidetracked, but we have another Phoenix Arms Pistola. We had the, uh, as we got a broken branch here, from right there actually. So we had a HP 22A, 22LR, semi-automatic pistol with a three inch barrel great shooter worked wonderfully so we got a we got the hp 25 which is the 25 acp so that'll be a new one to check out this weekend tomorrow as so we got a multicolored snowman looks like some kids had fun coloring it They just colored it that color for a specific reason. Wind's picking up a little bit. Getting rain blown in my face. I'm gonna go across the street. I'm gonna head up bro. I'm going to head up Bro Street. 
I'm going to come up a little bit short on my mileage, so I'm going to have to make up the difference somewhere along the way. Birds out here birding. The birds are birding. I don't know where all the robins went. They probably left in sheer disgust. That spring isn't here for them to eat all the worms on the lawns. It will be this week coming up though. They will be okay this week coming up. car over here without a front end. Hey buddy. It's okay. A little pile of branches over here. People got branches all over their lawns. Tiny little ones. I smell a wood stove. Somebody's got a wood stove going. Coming up on that spot, I saw a deer. Oh dear. A lot of times deer use the same, the same trails. And they have young deer who learn the trail. It's like they pass it down. And this is the safe way to go. Or he veered off a path and he was sightseeing. The security thing said, hi, you are currently being recorded. Well, so are you. What are you going to do about it anyways? Trump flag wrapped around the pole. Trump yard sign flag. <sighs> Another pile of wood there. 
some of these piles of wood have snow on them that was plowed so the piles of wood were not made after it snowed it was made before from the foot of snow we had last week with wind that knocked everybody's power out or most people well i don't want to say most but this storm for example a quarter of the customers in maine lost power 349,000 it was and I see a bunch of down trees in there and branches that looks like a big mess in there a couple of snap birch trees what a mess what a big mess last year somebody had a big giant raging bonfire going in their yard and I think they were burning up all that wood they had lawn chairs around it. They were sitting out there enjoying a fire. I think it might be safe to put the snowblower away in storage. Maybe. <laughs> we had a storm last weekend. We had the one this weekend, and we're getting a storm towards the end of this week, but it's going to be all rain. Thursday and Friday, I think. So, you know, my Google Fit app said I just hit four miles. Apple Watch says 3.84. But when I'm done my walk, they'll both be about the same. That's why I have this theory that Google Fit One adjusts itself after I'm done my walk from available data on the internet on what the length should be. The Apple Watch uses GPS more accurately without the internet. So, some more broken branches here. Downed cable. Branches down. This will be about the time this battery gives out, I think. Somewhere around the corner here. Also just around the corner, my Apple Watch will say it's four miles. It's behind my Google Fit. We're having dueling fitness apps. That well, looks like I got a sidewalk part of the way up here. The snow was so wet and heavy that they had one of those wedge type plows, trucks, little tractors going on the sidewalks. Over here, I can see they use the one with the chute that shoots snow. But when it gets too thick and too heavy, the wheels just spin and it can't get going. I've seen that. Uh, I've already seen that happen in person out front of our place. I actually saw the guy with the snowplow type get hung up on the telephone pole. He was stuck. He was rocking that back and forth. It finally gave out. He didn't scar up the telephone pole too bad. Got another snapped branch over here. Snapped right off the tree, which is usually where branches snap from. And the puddle I just went through is why I wore my boots. 
And now my laces are wet. They're going to stay tied better than they were. Wondering if I should just, when I have to wear these laces, spray them down with water before I leave, get them wet. Or just get caught in laces. I actually have extra laces uh, in a drawer in the house. Let's see what I got in there. Yep. I'm going to have to walk in the breakdown lane up ahead. Surprised this is still recording, actually. This usually stops right now. I probably should change it here before I go around the corner. So I might just stop and do that now. I'll be right back with a fresh battery. All right. Put that squared away. Fresh battery in. Another reason why I wanted to walk today is I ate an entire large bag of cheese nachos. Nacho cheese chips, tortillas. I love tortilla chips. I hardly ever eat those. The last time I had any chips like that, it was several months. So I got to walk off the guilt. So we get some more tree. Oh, look at this. We have a big branch sitting right on that house. So we had a house fall, uh, branch fall in the house. On these trees, a lot of branches down. That was a pretty nasty storm. So they got a big branch there. I don't know how they're gonna get that down. I'll have to go up on the roof and do it or have somebody come do it, which isn't cheap, by the way. And I'm sure right now they're pretty book solid. So that might be there for a while whole bunch of branches down there too looks like everybody's had branches down oddly enough we get this big willow tree behind our house and usually it loses branches just looking at it and all these storms we've had they really haven't had much come off it kind of shocking actually Maybe the tree's been taking its iron. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going back the way I came. Definitely get my five miles in, which is what I wanted. I couldn't take the route by Bates College because they didn't clear the walkway, the sidewalks. This person sees me, that's nice. It's nice to be noticed. Hopefully tonight, we'll do some more sidewalk cleaning. They never clean these, so this is always like this till it melts. But I believe it's going to be above freezing tonight, so it's all it needs. It's melting. 
We've got a nice little torrent of water running down here. It'll keep eating away at the snow and washing it out. Yeah, look at this. Look at this water runoff. It's all just melting away. Quick, quick, quick. And because the other side doesn't have any room to walk, I'm going to stay on this side. I always want the traffic coming towards me. I don't want to deal with getting hit by some 20 year old because he was texting or she was texting. Oh, that my friends is a dead possum. Yep, that's a dead possum. One less animal to raid her chicken coop up here. Dead possums aren't much fun. Some branches down. I see a broken tree branch up ahead. We'll take a look at that. I'll watch for these cars coming. That looked like an official police car. Black. It was all black. It had blue lights in the grill. Unmarked. All right, look at this. That is a big branch. Looks like it snapped off right there. Branches down everywhere. It's all mud. All mud. I thought I could walk on the side here out of the traffic, but it's all mud. That ain't gonna happen.
This is that area the dead duck was. Up here on this bigger tree with the yellow diamond. Doing 109 beats per minute right now. Sitting down rested. My resting beats per minute. Uh, part of yesterday was about 52 to 58. It's usually it's usually between 60 and 80 most of the time it's in the 60s low 60s sometimes goes in the 50s sometimes I get an app glitch and I can always tell what that is because when I look at the graph that it keeps like I had one day it said 149 beats per minute which is pretty close to cardiac arrest and it did it while I was sitting there doing nothing and I felt fine. And then not even literally two seconds later, it said 61. So I think sometimes it uses kind of like this green light that reads the pulse on your wrist. And I think it only does it when I see the heart spinning where it's kind of like when you have a ram that's used up or something and it's trying to do something else so it's one of those things then the other reason why i know it's bad is i had one day it said 44. now a well-trained olympic athlete that trains every day for hours cardiovascular They'll have a beats per minute resting around 40 to 70. Mine's between 50 and 80. Which is good for somebody that's just walking for exercise. Now they say you can tell when you're having heart problems when you get your heart rate up and then it has a hard time coming back down. That is a telltale sign. Or if you're experiencing heart fluttering kind of feelings. It's uh, atrial fibrillation, pretty, pretty common. Not extremely common, but some people uh, in their 50s, between 50 and 80 experience that. They got medications for that. Um, some people also get like a pacemaker if it's real bad and the reason why it's bad when it does that is it means you have a heart valve that's in chamber that's fluttering and uh, what happens is, is it causes blood to pool and we know what blood does when it pools it congeals and you get a blood clot so one of the causes of stroke is atrial fibrillation. So it's definitely something to pay attention to because it is fixable, but it increases your chance of a stroke by 40% from what I read. So you don't want that. But I haven't experienced 
anything bad. The only times I know when is when I'm low on iron, going up a hill, my heart will start beating like crazy. And a couple times I felt a little, a little faint. But I walk this same route all the time. I take some iron, and then there's no issues at all. So I'm very familiar with my chemistry because of that celiac disease. I don't absorb enough nutrients on my own. I have to, I have to supplement. So that's what I do. So both of my apps have gone over five miles. I'm going to stop recording up around the corner here. I want to thank you for coming with me today and walking in the rain checking out the snowstorm damage which there was some looks like people are cleaned out shoveled out I'm gonna wait for the solar eclipse Monday I might even go for a solar eclipse walk how cool would that be might even be able to watch it through my phone using the GoPro I'm going to research that online. I'll have the GoPro on my head and I will watch on my phone and not stare at the sun. See if I can do that. Because you can change the shutter settings and the ISO to have a really dark image. It might actually show something cool. So, with that, and watch out for this mud walking around the corner because that is definitely send you on your canned mud. Keep smiling, be happy, and have a beautiful weekend. We're going to have a beautiful day shooting tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of fun. We've got water jugs to shoot, big giant five gallon containers, and some other mischief to get into. So, hopefully I'll have some video from that this week. I tried to last week, but the, uh, we had severe wind, we had camera problems, we had cameras falling over, missing the shots. Nothing went right last weekend, so hopefully that changes. So have a beautiful day, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming along with me. Bye-bye.